Want to know the best tip in Demon Souls? Go and fall off a cliff. I'm serious. When you get back to the Nexus after defeating a boss, go and walk off a ledge. Killing yourself in this way is a good idea because of something called World Tendency, a mechanic in Demon's Souls where the world itself reacts to your success or failure in human form. Kill a boss and that world takes a step towards White World Tendency, making enemies weaker. Die in human form and your world takes a step backwards into Black World Tendency, making enemies tougher. You can see how white or black your world tendency is in this menu screen, and how bright the eyes are will give you an indication of where that world's tendency is at. So when you're in human form, you have all of your health, but if you die, then you enter soul form, where your health is at 50%. The plus side, in soul form, your deaths no longer affect world tendency, so that's why we die in the Nexus. This way, we stay in soul form and we keep our world tendency white, because every time you kill a boss, world tendency goes even further towards pure white, and if you never die in human form, then your world will eventually just hit pure white world tendency by the time you defeat the final boss boss, which also unlocks a bunch of special events for each world. And after you're at pure white world tendency, in a finished world, you can consider moving your world tendency back towards black world tendency if there's any pure black events that you want to experience. Now, that's not to say that you should never go into human form, just be aware that when you do, you run the risk of making your world harder. But if you feel like you want to roll the dice and get that extra health to kill a boss, then pop a stone of ephemeral eyes and just go for it. It's a lot more exciting to play Demon Souls in this way. And while you're human, you also open yourself up to more online play. To summon other players into your world for help, you'll need to be human. Look on the ground for blue summoning signs that other players have placed and summon the phantoms that look strong. If you want to be the phantom and help other players, then you'll need the blue eye stone that you get from the Maiden in Black after defeating the first boss, Phalanx. Use this in soul form in a part of the world where you think people will see your sign and other players will be able to touch your mark when they're in human form and summon you into their world as assistance. Help them defeat the boss of the level and you'll get souls and your body back. Alternatively, you can also invade human players to get your body back. The item you'll need for this is the Black Eye Stone, and you'll need to kill a nameless NPC Black Phantom to receive one. So good candidates for this are the Black Phantom in the first stage of Latria, right before the first boss, or the Black Phantom in the second stage of the Shrine of Storms, who is in the pit underneath the first Reaper you'll see. Picking a good server is also important now. You can go back to the title screen and choose a server there. Choose one that has low latency, but be aware that at launch the popular servers are under pretty heavy load, so be aware that the lowest latency might not match your area. But before you engage in online play, you're gonna wanna know the basics, and the first tip of any Souls game has to be this. Keep your shield up. Out of all the Souls games though, I feel like Demon Souls actually puts more emphasis on the shield than any other, and there are a ton of enemies that you can simply defeat by attacking after they bounce off your shield. The shield I'd recommend at the beginning is the Heater Shield, which you can get from the Blacksmith in the Nexus. It blocks 100% of physical damage, but not all shields do this, so be sure to check their stats so you don't take chip damage. This is a light shield. But if you want to go for a tanky build, then you can choose a heavier shield and you won't take as much of a stamina hit when you block. Drop your shield in between enemy attacks to regenerate stamina and always rotate around your enemies so you can backstab them wherever possible. You're invulnerable while you're doing this, so it's great when you're surrounded by multiple enemies. If you time it right, you can also keep some enemies in a backstab loop. Of course, if you're a magic build, you might rarely find yourself in a position to backstab. Since you'll be attacking at range and wanting to get away whenever enemies get too close, you'll often find yourself just rolling instead. There are a couple of frames here when you hit the roll button where you're completely invincible, so you can either use those to roll through an attack or simply roll out of range before an attack can hit you. Rolling, like most things, consumes stamina, but it's often a better way to avoid damage than blocking is, especially when your stamina is low. In Demon's Souls also you'll only get a fast roll if you stay below 50% equipment burden, visible here. Fat rolling at 51% equipment burden is a world worse than being at 49%, so try to just stay shy of 50% unless you're fully committed to a heavy, tanky build, which can work as well. Leveling endurance will help you with your equipment burden. 
But in Demon Souls, no matter what stat you level, your defense will actually be raised, meaning your character will always feel more powerful as you level, more so than in any other Souls game. If you're still not sure which stats to level, consider subscribing because soon I'll do a video covering great early game builds, but until then, you really can't go wrong with vitality and endurance. To level your stats, you'll have to exchange your souls with the Maiden in Black, who is found in the Nexus. And one of the funnier quirks of Demon Souls, unless it happens to you, is that you can actually lose these levels in a ton of different ways. For example, if you invade a host and fall to your death, then how embarrassing, you lose a level. If you invade a host and willingly leave their world, or if they kick you out with the Banish Miracle, that's rude, you lose a level. Some bosses even drain your soul levels, but I won't spoil who. The stat you'll lose is the one that's the highest relative to your character's starting stats. And unlike other Souls games, spells don't require a certain amount of faith or magic to cast, they just require you to have enough MP and spell slots, which can be expanded by leveling your intelligence stat. Your spell effectiveness still scales with these stats though, so if you're a magic build, then target magic with some intelligence, and if you're a faith build, target faith with some intelligence as well. In this game, you attune your spells at spell vendors, and to get your MP back, you'll want to use the spice consumables found throughout the world. When you do inevitably take damage, you'll need to heal. Demon's Souls healing system is kind of like Bloodborne's, where you find healing items out in the world, and while there is a smaller cap on how much grass you can carry in the remake, you can still brute force a lot of encounters by being prepared with good healing. In the original, inventory management was a nightmare, but in the remake you can also send all those items back to Stockpile Thomas with the click of a button. Always do this, and make sure to go back to him often to retrieve your overstocked healing items. And the amount grass heals corresponds to the cycles of the moon in their names. So crescent moon grass heals the least, and full moon grass heals the most. Try to put them on your quick menu in that order, but remember if you hold down on the d-pad, it will instantly take you to the first item on your quick bar, so maybe make that your most powerful grass, so you can get to it in a pinch. You'll find yourself using Crescent Moongrass a lot between fights, since it's the cheapest and easiest to find, but during battle you might want to equip the more valuable ones to help you stay alive. The absolute best consumable vendor in this game, weirdly enough, is Patches, who sells a wide variety in the Nexus for the cheapest price. You can find him here after one of his two encounters out in the world. One encounter is in the second stage of Stonefang Tunnels, where you turn left at the fork, take the elevator down, and follow the narrow cave to this cliff face. He's on the left. The other encounter is in the second stage of the Shrine of Storms, below the first Reaper you would have seen in the cutscene. After either of these, he'll appear in the Nexus, and if he ever disappears from the Nexus, then you might have to go and complete the other encounter that you didn't finish first. If you don't have enough souls for levels or consumables, then you can try to farm for a while. One of my favorite spots is in the first stage of the Shrine of Storms, and it's actually a really good place to practice your parries as well. The skeletons take a ton of damage from blunt damage type weapons, so check your inventory for something blunt you can use, but if you don't have anything, just pummel them with your fists instead, they do heaps of damage. Use your shield to block their attacks, and then hit them as many times as you can, or parry them until they're dead. If you have an upgraded bow, another great spot is in the second level of the Shrine of Storms, where you can easily take out the Reaper to harvest the souls from all of his apparitions. The type of damage your weapon does feels so important in Demon's Souls, because as we just saw, some enemies are very weak or very resistant to either blunt, slashing, or piercing damage. There's the tough scales of the miners, or the plate armor of the soldiers, for example, which can be easily pierced or crushed. Those in the Valley of Defilement are incredibly weak to fire, and those with light armor tend to be weak to slashing attacks. You can sort of use your common sense here, experiment a bit as well, and you'll find that in Demon Souls, a lot can be overcome with the right strategies and thinking critically about the RPG elements rather than just using raw skill. Blacksmith Baldwin is where you can repair and upgrade your weapons, and we'll talk about powerful weapons soon in a video titled Overpowered Early. But until then, know that you should come back here often to see if you can upgrade your weapons with the shards that you'll find throughout the world. Most of your basic weapons use sharpstone, largely found in the Stonefang Tunnels and in Boletaria, and there are honestly too many other shard types in Demon's Souls to mention here, so I'll just put a wiki link in the description. 
That said, you can only upgrade your weapon to plus 5 in the Nexus, and to upgrade it further, you'll need to find a Blacksmith Ed. Ed is located at the bottom of the rotating platforms at the very beginning of the Stonefang Tunnels. To get those platforms moving, simply progress through the first level in a linear fashion until you get to this laneway with lava lizards in a room to your right. Proceed straight along this lane, break through all the rubble, and turn the lever on the cliff face. Below is Blacksmith Ed who can take boss souls and turn them into unique boss weapons once you give him a red hot demon soul, which you get from Flame Lurker later on in this world. Once you have it, give it to Ed and come back whenever you get a new boss soul to see what you can craft. For example, Phalanx's lead soul can be combined with a plus seven short spear to create the scraping spear, and there's tons more like this. Find a weapon and a shield that suits you, and when you're confident in them, spend the time upgrading them at Blacksmith Ed, Doing this will make you so much more powerful than a couple of levels will. The order in which you do levels will affect how powerful you feel as well. Each world has at least three stages which you unlock in sequential order, and the further you get into a world, the harder it will get as well. Therefore, try to clear the first couple of stages of each world before progressing too deep into any particular one. This will give you a mental break from difficult areas, and it will allow your character to become much more powerful off of the early areas. If you're worried that you've died too many times in human form and you've ruined your world and your game by making it black world tendency, don't worry. Let me introduce you to this cute little guy, the primeval demon. There's one of these in each world, and while they always appear in the same place, they'll only spawn when you're at least three steps towards black world tendency. If your icon is this color or darker, it's time to go hunting. When you kill it, you will go three steps back towards white, which in most cases means the world will at least be back to where it started. From here, play in soul form, and then go back to killing bosses. In Boletaria, the demon is found in the third stage, past where you would have found the official's cap. Take the stairs on the right, past the two guards, and there it is. In Stonefang, it's found on the first level. Just activate the elevator past the falling boulders and you'll find it at the bottom. In Latria, progress through the second stage until you find Yurt's cell that takes you down into the swamp and look for it down there. In the Shrine of Storms, kill the first reaper to open a passageway on the left. Go through the secret entrance, avoid the black skeletons, and you'll find the demon further on. Lastly, in the second level of the valley, turn left to go deeper into the swamp right before you hit the village with the filthy woman. If your world is four steps deep into black world tendency, that means it's pure black, where special named black phantoms will appear. These drop special loot, but they're also very difficult to defeat. If you manage it, you'll go a step back towards white world tendency, and you'll get a cool item too. Honestly, World Tendency kind of deserves an entire video, so stay tuned for that. And if you appreciate all the help here, maybe consider buying some of my merch. You might remember ages ago I launched a design called Fate on Teespring, which looks quite similar to Yurt's armor, I think. So maybe check that one out. And I'm also excited to announce a new design called Valorheart, which is printed on champion hoodies and champion tees. I'm sure you're familiar with that brand. Uh, the reason I chose this design for that brand was because the design is inspired by the Valorheart weapon from Dark Souls 3, and some of you might get the association, you get this weapon from the champion Grave Tender. It's a subtle Souls reference, like all my merch is, uh, so most people in public shouldn't recognize the gaming reference unless they're an avid Souls fan. That's the goal. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.